welcome back again. Uh, so what we're going to do uh, in the next couple is we're going to try to learn a little bit more about efficiency. Um, and it turns out that it's very, very common to pull things from core data uh, and display them in a table. Like it's just so common. People do it all the time that Apple's come up with like some improved ways to do it, right? And what they set up is what's called an NS fetched results controller. Um, and it's a more efficient way to do things. And it's the recommended approach if you've got something that's in core data and you're going to be showing it in a table, this is how they recommend you do it. And so we're going to be learning a little bit more about it. What we're going to do before we start in on this is we're actually going to make another copy of the project. Um, just because this approach, again, it, it's going to modify it so much uh, that it'd be nice to have a snapshot of the other. So I'm just going to say copy, uh, and then I'm just going to go ahead and say paste. And then I'm just going to change the current copy uh, to be called core data via an array. So we have this array that just keeps a reference to things. Um, we're going to start doing it a better way, but I wanted to save a copy of the via array, which is kind of the simple approach before we start doing the fetched results controllers. All right, so now we've got a, a clean uh, project that we can work with, um, and we're going to try to fix this problem of if we add just like one thing, um, instead of just throwing away everything we know, you know, how can we like do it more efficiently? So we're going to be getting rid of um, our update movie quotes array and we're going to be replacing it with another approach. In this video, we're just going to kind of set the stage, right? Uh, so in order to set the stage, what I really think is a better way to, to do things is to actually look at how Apple fixed the problem. And of course, in their template, they do it right, right? Because the templates are kind of like meant to be example codes for you. So what I want you to do is I want you to create a new project um, with the master detail application that uses core data. We've actually created this, uh, this app before, but I don't think when we did it before it was using core data. Actually, this app started with that. But we've, we've erased that code, right? And so I want to get it back. So I'm just going to say File, New Project. And what I'm going to select is Master Detail Application. Um, and I just want to just call it master detail, um, you know, you can add the word core data if you want template. Because last time we did it, we didn't have core data. Uh, set the language to Swift, because we kind of want to use Swift things. As far as devices, I don't care. Set it to iPhone, because it's the simplest. And make sure this box is checked, right? It won't do you much good without it. And then you can save it wherever you want. And once it opens up, I mean, you could run it again if you really want. But to be honest, I think I've got this app memorized, right? It makes timestamps. You can edit them. I really just care about how it does it. Um, and so specifically what I'm interested in is, you know, you can see that here they have a managed object context. Uh, and when they do things like saving, so here they've got insert new object, you know, like how do they do it? What does some of that code look like? And what it really comes down to is it comes down to this thing called their fetched results controller. And so we're going to look at what they're doing with this thing, and we're just going to try to make our own fetch results controller. So if you look around for it in this file, it's just a property, right? Actually, it turns out that uh, the fetch results controller is actually a computed property, which is kind of interesting. Um, and then there's also, this is sneaky, uh, there's also a stored property that's called underscore fetch results controller. What, why, what is this all about? This is actually a pattern that, that Apple has used for years. Um, and that is, they, it's, it's kind of referred to as lazy loading, uh, but lazy loading is now something a little different. But they say, you know, if it already exists, um, then use it, right? So if it's not nil, return that thing. Um, but if it doesn't exist yet, then go through and make it, right? So anytime it doesn't exist, uh, just go through and make it. Um, and then at the bottom, they just return the, the stored property. So what we're going to do, just to save ourselves some, some work, is we're just going to copy... Uh, their whole method uh, for creating a fetch results controller and just stick it into our, make sure you're in the table viewing, uh, our table viewing. I'm going to stick it in uh, just above the bottom, right? So just before the navigation area. To be honest, it's a property and typically I put my properties at the top, but it's so much code that I kind of wanted to put it a little lower. Once we bring it in, uh, you can see that there's an error. Not shocking. You bring in a bunch of code, there's an error. Um, it turns out that if you look at what the error is, it's just saying that the movie quotes table view doesn't conform to the protocol. Well, it got cut off, but the NS fetch results controller delicate protocol. So we need to implement a protocol um, in this file. Starting off to implement a protocol, you start typing the name. So the name of this one is fetched results controller uh, delegates. 
um, make sure you add the, the delegate or else it'll think you're subclassing it, right? So the delegate is the name of the protocol. Interestingly enough, that made the errors go away, and, and that's because that protocol has all optional methods, so they're, every single method in it is optional. So we actually just implemented it without actually implementing anything, uh, which I think is just funny. So we got rid of the errors, which is great. Uh, but we do want to do a little bit more cleanup in this guy, and I want to talk about how he works. Uh, the way he works is he's really similar to cursors, if you know how cursors work and other things. Uh, if you happen to know Android development, this is a cursor adapter, uh, but that probably doesn't help most people. So what it does is he creates a fetch. Um, it sets like a max size on the fetch. It sets a sort order. We've done all stuff like this before. Um, and then it just sets up a fetch results controller on that fetch. So it's really not that hard. Um, and then it does some error checking, uh, which we know how to do error checking. Um, and it just says perform fetch, which is kind of neat. The other thing it does under the hood for you is like if there's ever a change to the data, it gets a notification, which is cool. So this is their code and their fetch. We want to do our fetch, right? So to do our fetch, we've got to go find where our fetch was. I think update movie quotes has it. Yeah, here it is. So this is where we prepare the request. So this is our request. So I want to do this thing, right? So I copy those two lines and then I come back to the fetch results controller and basically their fetch, I mean, I'm just going to start by kind of commenting it out. Um, but you can see that all they did in this area is they, they set up the fetch. They used a lot more words to do the same thing we did. Um, so I don't really need that. One thing they did that was different is they set a batch size. This is like, how many things do you want to get at a time? So with our method, if we had a million entries, we would, we would get them all and you wouldn't see anything until they all loaded. It turns out that that's, that's also inefficient, right? And if a user can only see like 20 in the table, just only get 20, right? And show those 20. And then as soon as you need more, you'll, you'll get more in another batch, right? So that setting the batch size is something we didn't do before uh, because we didn't need to because we needed all of them, uh, but we do want to do now. And then the sort descriptors, uh, we did this on line 164 there, right? So get rid of those things. So our method is getting a lot shorter, uh, which I always like shorter. The next thing we need to do is we need to actually create the fetch results controller. Um, I could modify how they did this, but the way they did it is fine. So they're using a, a managed object context. Uh, it's using a section name of nil, which means don't worry about, about that feature. And then it's also got a cache. For the cache, you can pass in any string you want, or you could even pass in nil if you don't want that, that level of caching. To be honest, I typically do let it cache. I don't really know how it works, but if it has a performance benefit, then, then do it, right? Um, I like to use names like movie quote cache, right? Or something like that. It doesn't really matter what you type at all. There is an off chance that it's gonna cause more errors. Like if you change the name, it'll say like cache doesn't exist. So nil might cause less errors, but, but I'm gonna do it uh, and it'll be fine. And when I say errors, I mean errors in the simulator where you'd have to click reset simulator, not like real errors. Next thing it does is it becomes a delegate. Uh, what this is used for is whenever it changes, it will like tell you that it changed and we will use this later. But for right now, we're just setting it up and leaving it alone. Next thing it's doing is it's setting the stored property. Uh, after that, it's doing some error handling. If you wanted to do error handling the way they did it, just leave it alone. Um, if you would like to make it how we did it earlier, that's also fine. Uh, and kind of our style earlier was, was like this. So I'm gonna go ahead and paste this in and then I'm gonna change like the inside of it, right? So we did the system to where we made an error, we did you know whatever action, so I'm gonna change the whatever action, and then we looked at the results. And so here you can see their whatever action is uh, fetch results controller perform fetch, right? And so you could use their style uh, or you could use the style that I put there. The only difference is they look at the return value. Um, I choose to look to see if the error is not nil or not. And I do it my way because that works all the time. Um, and I forget whether it returns true for success or false for success. Um, it's true for success. I just sometimes forget. Um, so that's kind of the way I do it. All right, so we've got our fetch results controller ready to go. Um, I think I'm just gonna delete some of these comments. 
um, and then we're going to start using it next time. So we've got this variable uh, that's ready to go, some, some good things going. It's a computed property. There's also a stored property that's kind of backing it up. And next time we're going to see what kind of goodness you can do with it. All right. See you then. Bye. Thank you.